Okay, so seeing as we're in the 1500 100 bracket for Blitz, just playing a 3 and 2 against the 1600 and see how we see how we get on. That's the area that we're currently at with these sessions. So we will get back to watching other players play, but just seeing if we can uh, have a quick double because that's where we're currently at with our Blitz rating. We're currently 15. I'm actually just going to tack the centre here. I'm going to have to move a bit swifter than this though. And let's go here. Let's just have a look at what the 1600s do. The elements are that, yes, they, they probably won't work the pieces together. They're going to be late castling. Uh, but it's being able to take advantage of those kind of quirky ways. Bishop there, then castling. Uh, no, not yet. Knight's attacking the pawn. I don't really want my rook all the way up there, do I? But it does look nice. Let's go. Just bring it straight back if there's nothing definite. Let's just take and then bring it back. Bishop's coming here now because it's going to have the x-ray through. We don't have time to dilly-dally. Let's just bring it back. Okay, so slow in castling pieces aren't working together but somehow they manage to get some type of authority in games so we need to try and circumvent all of this get our knight out at some point only if it's required though and he's castled now so I'm gonna bring the knight out so what they're looking for I mean, 3 and 2 is a speed game, but I don't really like increments on the fast games because you might as well just term it as a long game. There's different strategies for... I love the um, no increment ones. I used to like the increment ones, but not when people were coming out with fantastic moves right at the very end of the game. You know, I had a good ending and somehow they just miraculously just kept moving really quick and winning on time and stuff so that got really annoying so we decided to just focus on no not yet we decided to focus on zero increments and it got rid of a lot of that super speedy to um, fast movements that were used to win when they were in bad positions now they can't because they're, they're not clawing back the time I mean silly things like, ooh, let's see what's going on here, let's attack the queen, smaller piece attacking the higher piece, he's trying to get his rooks maybe to own this file to face our queen, <coughs> so hopefully we'll win a bit of a tempo, move our queen, get the rooks, this pawn has got no protection on, but this pawn has got no protection on, um, Do we want? which one do we want to champion? Let's go here, move this one. Save the pawn. We've got pa more pawns on this side and he's got more pawns on that side, so he was going to get rid of our pawn majority. Yeah, <coughs> they're not stupid, are they? Okay, so if we bring the knight up, can't really get to this juicy square. He's got protection from both these knights. So I think this knight's going to move so his bishop can... No, maybe his bishop's not going to do that. Loose protection here in front of his king. <coughs> Queen's directly opposite, but how can we make that work? Can't. It's annoying when you just can't see something. The time is running down, but I'm not coming for the knight, 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 knight. Uh, queen, pawn attack. No, we can't really do that, can we? Uh, X ray through, drops the pawn. Can't drop the pawn because the queen has got the X ray through to the king. It's not like I'm going to take it though. I'm going to take this pawn because it's got no protection. I think. Yeah, it's got no protection. I moved a bit swift then. Uh, can always bring the knight back because it's got support of the rook at the minute. But this knight is going to move. So then it's going to have the bishop and the rook on there. And this knight's protecting this pawn. But we do have a 2 on 1. But he does have 2 on 1 with the queen. Eek. 
the time is running down but in a two second increment I don't think I'm relying on time I need to look at position let's move this knight which is protecting this pawn which we get a double don't we so we can attack the queen looks like anyway hope we're not trapping ourselves as they come here or something uh, the rooks come down defending a uh, bit of a panic move oh and they've stopped because we we're just about to take here <gasps> Oh, very good. That was quite exciting. Let's have a look at the analysis on that. So, obviously, while you're actually playing the game, um, it's harder to go, you know, I can't, you know, like when I'm doing the um, sort of narr narration on the other games I'm watching, I can't just sit there and go, oh, well, the opponent is... Um, the character is this and the character is that etc because I have to focus actually on the game on my moves as I'm going in the back of my head I am thinking these things I'm thinking things like let's go back to the beginning well you should already know what I'm thinking anyway now based on what we've done before so you should have a good idea as to where I'm coming from in terms of the characters that we're playing within these ratings not them personally, it's the actual mechanics of being like a 1600, a 1500, etc. So we attacked and took the pieces off the board. And we're obviously looking at the eval bar just to see if there's any major dips. And we can then challenge those major dips to see whether or not we're still comfortable with it. Or if the computer move um, gives us an insight into something we need to work on. So we push through the centre as usual. Um, it's a little bit precarious this knight being in this position here, and you know his pieces are still sort of jammed in. I know ours are in. It's just his looks really odd because of the fact of during all of this time period we've actually gone and castled, and throughout the sessions that we've covered, we've said castling is um, a key thing, whether it's the old traditional castling or getting your king into some sort of safe zone rather than leaving it in the center of the board that is a massive thing that um, all of the rating levels that we've shown so far they really kick in although maybe the 1200s they like to get castled quicker yet yeah, more so than the 1300s they don't castle 1400s they, they don't castle 1500s they don't castle but the aware 1500s do um, so not everybody like I say but on in my general world of playing against the players if I see this type, type of pattern then I, I have an idea as to what I need to work on within the game so they're developing there now and it's not set in stone you know I'm dictated by what the opponent plays so we're defending our pawn but also developing our rook facing off their king yeah, so it's directly opposite the king so it's a small thing you might think well it's behind a pawn and what are you on about um, when stuff kicks off if I'm pushing forward etc then I don't have to get my rook placed in front of their king they need to do something about protecting their king so those little things help you win movements in time which are those tempies or tempos so we're attacking the knight, not realistically wanting to take the knight, we're just getting a position, developing the bishop. So now we're pushing forward towards the king. The pawn is pushing forward towards the king. The rook now is facing the king, so we've got one tier of defence in front of the king now. But we have to be mindful that our rook potentially is in a dangerous zone, because rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board as we know. Gage bar is probably agreeing with that concept there. So the bishop now is looking to x-ray through and um, we did mention we need to just get this rook move back so taking it back to where it came isn't a problem for me gauge bar is going no white is winning by minus one so i didn't feel there was a win for them in any way i just needed to get my pieces developed they were developed slowly they haven't castled so i disagree with the gauge bar at this moment so then they castle and this pawn here is a little bit loose our pawn is a little bit loose so they attack our bishop we bring the bishop back because we still got a nice diagonal at the minute 
pushing through onto the paw and we do have a like a two on one situation going there so it's behind the scenes those are the types of attacks when you look at the higher 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 levels who play chess properly not the fancy arty ones um, when you look at those small moves that they're making if you look behind where they've moved their piece and then look behind the piece that they have <laughs> actually placed their piece so look behind 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 then you'll see a different kind of chess game being developed I'm not there yet but I'm understanding that um, principle so we bring the knight across now king's not home alone now we can attack the queen smaller piece attacking a higher piece so hopefully my pieces are starting to gel together a little bit especially around this zone here we've got the knight we've got the rook we've got the bishop around this key zone looking fairly tasty so in my head i'm thinking we potentially could let this um, area go because we do have sights of the pawn but are we going to lose out if we do take that and i i decided i think we're probably going to lose out because it's just grabbing a piece it's a one piece attack that's like a 1500 thing you know okay do my two punch combination and then their position is not any good so i wanted to have a half decent position somewhere so i plumped for the potential value for this move being better than actually grabbing the pawn here so I, I'm, at least i'm defending the pawn i'm also opposite the king this pawn can't push down so it's putting pressure towards the area of the king whereas their queen their big big gun is on the other side of the board not putting any pressure towards our king whatsoever so i'm fairly comfortable with that situation gauge bar saying we've crept up a little bit plus 0.2 that means nothing plus 0.2 anyway so they push the pawn down because that's they were aware of that but the, i believe they lose a bit of tempo doing that move because they're not developed their pieces to actually develop an attack now they've turned themselves into counter attackers in a sense well not even counter attackers just sitting waiting to see what we do so that loses them tempo in time in movement on the board so we can now develop our knight and they bring their rook across wasn't too sure about that particular move the reason being i saw it only later um this pawn here is ready to be taken that's why the gauge bars jumped up and down but it's no no big no great shape it's because the rook comes into the center of the board and like we said rooks don't really have a place in the center of the board unless of course it's to your advantage you know doing some type of clever um sacrifice taking a knight taking a bishop taking a pawn and it's then going to lead to some sort of check on the king then that's worthy of you know putting the rook in the center so we grab the pawn but it doesn't have the same impact as it would have done earlier in fact it probably wasn't even that move now that i'm looking at it so then was there we go here and then he's moved there so it's now basically yeah it is the knight taking the pawn so we lost out somewhere in that tempo and it's changed the, um, the shape of the game just from missing that small tempi but i didn't see it at the time so i'm not going to beat myself up about it it was right there i was focused on other things which was x-raying through onto his rook so that reduced down the the strength of my situation with the computer but it increased it in my head so they bring their rook down so now we can take the pawn and they've brought their knight back and at that point there i mean this knight is protecting this pawn here so again when you're working your pieces together you're supporting pieces he was doing that, that quite nicely but his queen is on the other side of the board his rooks are also on the other side of the board and now to relinquish the protection of the pawn gives us a little bit of a strong base to actually attack and look at the gauge bar <laughs> <laughs> black resigned right look at the gauge bar yeah well they resigned because that one was a bit bad but what queen taking d4 there's a combination here that i 
the queen taking the d4 a human ain't going to do this they're going to take there because this queen doesn't have any protection on and they want this rook to come here so if we take then he takes here so he's winning out loads so he's got one two three one two three four five five pieces one two three four right so that's a very nice combination there but in a fast speedy game I would have been shot to my hilt if I'd have seen that move being delivered okay so humans we played human moves so this rook came down feeling the pressure and obviously at that point then the knight was going to be taking the rook yep so that was a pretty that's a pretty educational one especially for myself in the sense but when you're playing a fast game you don't you don't see these things you know these minute things there i mean we've got a, got a minute left he's only got 21 seconds left so he would definitely be hard pressed to actually see that move 